Hi Eagles, my name is Andrea Popwell and I'm the very proud principal of St. Lucie West Centennial High School, the best darn high school in St. Lucie County. As principal, it is my honor and my privilege to welcome you to the 2020-2021 school year. Although we can't meet in person right now, know that I'm eager to meet you and help you become acclimated to our Eagle way of life. I would like to start by thanking all of the students, families, faculty, staff, and friends for their understanding and patience in supporting our efforts to navigate the uncharted waters presented by this global pandemic. Our students have been and will always be first and foremost in our thinking and planning with their safety, health, and welfare being paramount to the successful opening and administration of a very exciting school year. The virtual open house will provide you the information needed for a productive return to school. The faculty and staff of St. Lucie West Centennial High School is completely committed to making sure each and every one of you have a successful school year. Our graduation coach, Ms. Register, and our senior sponsor, Ms. Bavacqua, will give you a tour as well as guide you through the new policies and procedures here on campus. Please be safe and know that your entire Eagle family cares about you, values you, and is here for you. We will work collaboratively to help you navigate our new normal. We are Eagle Strong. Here at Centennial, we have a large, beautiful campus, which sometimes can be intimidating to newcomers. So we decided to make you a video to help simplify the process of getting around. See, once you know the layout, getting around on campus is as simple as A, B, C. That's right, our campus navigates in an alphabetical order, which if you understand the sequence, makes it simple to get around and find your classes. Now let's dig a little deeper in the process. On your schedule, you'll notice your rooms. Next to each room, you'll see both a letter and a room number. The letter identifies what building the room is in. In this example, room A121 is our first room on our schedule. A is located in the far northwest corner of the school and include classes such as culinary arts and early childhood. Now let's see if we can follow the alphabetical sequence of the campus. Logically, next to building A is building B, which houses the cafeteria. For building C through F, we go along the north corridor starting with building C, then D, followed by E, then F, and finally G, our gym, is located in the back of the school. To continue our alphabetical sequence, we will continue from the south quarter, from the back of the school, to the front of the school. Starting with building H, then I, followed naturally by J, K, L and M. Then we have our auditorium. Then to the front of the school, we have N, otherwise known as our front office. Along the center of our campus, we have hallways connecting both North Quarter and South Quarter. This year, in light of our circumstances, these hallways will have specific traffic patterns which will be posted on each door. Let's start with O hallway. O hallways located at the beginning of each corridor. Important to note, both the media center and digital video technology is part of the O building, but not accessible from O hallway, but they can be accessed directly from the courtyard in front of the cafeteria. This is followed by P hallway, then there's Q hallway, and we also have R hallway. Finally, freshmen will notice the letters HB at the front of some of their classes. This simply indicates that one of your classes are located in a hybrid building. Hybrid classes are located in the freshman village, which is just south of the south quarter and can be accessed from the south quarter. 
and will have specific traffic pattern for entering the village and exiting the village. These patterns will be posted via signs on campus. We hope this video helps you with your navigation on campus this year, but now our very own Ms. Mavakwa and Ms. Register will take you on a virtual tour to give you a visual of what some of these locations are like. Take it away, ladies. Hi, I'm Mrs. Register, and I am the graduation coach here at Centennial High School. And I'm Ms. Bavakwa, and we look so forward to having you here this year at our school. Welcome to Centennial High School. Today, we're gonna give you a virtual tour of our campus and show you all the spots that you need to know so that you know exactly what you're doing when you come onto our campus the first day of school. Right now, we're going to go and take you through the front office and show you everything you need to know about the front office. Hey, Ms. Farrell, I'm late today. Can I have a pass? If you arrive late to school, you will want to stop in at the front office and you will go see Ms. Farrell, who is our attendance clerk. We have our health clinic and all face, all face coverings are required at all times when entering our health clinic. Now, all the doors down this way are your guidance counselors. Every guidance counselor is up in the main office this year. And our ESC department. Make sure to put your face mask on anytime that you're inside, especially at lunch. follow CDC guidelines, so make sure you only take a seat in a seat that's not taped. This way we can ensure our safety. Enjoy your lunch. All right, lunch is over. Time to go to class. Where are you headed? Well, I will be do going down to D102 to Dr. Britton's physics honors class. So in order to go to C through F, we will take this hallway. But if you're going down to H or the Freshman Academy, you would use that. Follow us. <laughs> Here we are. We're in the north um, hallway, and we're going to go down buildings and show you buildings C through F all the way to the gym. You can also get to P, Q, and R, which where will be where most of your core classes are. Follow. what we just walked past the C hallway and now we're coming up to D hallway. So all of your C classrooms are in this building and all your, the D building classrooms are in this building. And as you can see, our interior hallways are connected through the corridors. Here we are at the E building. You'll find our criminal justice and our art in this building. We're going to keep on going down to F. One of the changes that we've made this year to ensure your safety is with our water fountains. Please do not drink from the water fountain, but fill your water bottle at any point in time to ensure that you stay hydrated in the heat, but that we're safe. and ROTC and then it opens up to you our end of the back of the school where our gym is located. If you are new to our campus and you have a PE class, when you come down to North Corridor, which we just showed you, that will take you into the boys locker room. If you are a girl, you're going to walk across the gym and enter the locker room from the South Portal. Hi again. We just came from the gym and now we are at the athletic office. At the athletic office you will, any of you athletes who are going to play a sport, you're going to come here to get your athletic packets and drop them off as well. We also have our new assistant principal, Miss Oliveira, located in this 
just past the athletic office, you have our health science classes, also located in the H building. Let's keep going. So here we are in front of our R hall. Now, one of the things that you'll notice about our campus is that from either corridor, you'll see our central hallways connect on either side. Except for this year, in order to ensure your safety, we're gonna follow whichever way the arrows tell us to go. So here we are at iBuilding. iBuilding locates a lot of our science classes, but it is also where you will find our student restrooms. We have one set of student restrooms here in the iBuilding. This way. <laughs> Welcome to our freshman village. If you're in the class of 2024, most of your core academic classes will be located in the freshman academy. So as you'll see in our village, there are several classes that you'll be going to. However, in the center, the three colored door is our freshman academy office. You can get late passes there. That's where you'll go if you need our assistant principal, Mr. Ader, or any questions that you might have. Before we leave the Freshman Academy, we want to point out that to get to the Freshman Academy, you have to come down the South Corridor. And make sure at all times you are following the arrows and we are trying to maintain people going one direction in and one direction out for the safety of everybody. Here at St. Lucie West Centennial High School, we have four center hallways. Again, most of them house our four classes. Let me show you Key Hall. Don't forget your face mask. Again, make sure you follow the arrows. Here we are at K Building, which is where you have some of your courses like psychology, French, a plethora of different things for you to take on campus. We're gonna take a look at our drama classroom, which shows a perfect example of how we will be social distancing our students this year. Welcome to the Black Box Theater. So one of the things that you'll notice is that the chairs are six feet apart and that it says social distancing on the ground. Throughout several places here at Centennial High School, you will notice we will be practicing social distancing. And if not, get that face mask. As you can see, we are now back at the front of the school in our main courtyard. Here is the M building where our band and choir classes are located. And then next to it is our auditorium. Usually our auditorium has many events throughout the school year. Come on over, let me show you the media center. So here in the media center, you can check out books, go on the computer, you might even have a class in here. We know that this school year is unlike any school year that you or we here at Centennial have ever experienced. We're gonna make it the best school year possible. Whether you're here on campus with us or you're at my school online, Centennial, we stick together. We're Centennial strong. Eagles, we're resilient. Let's have a great year. Go, Go Eagles! Eagles.
St. Lucie Public Schools is excited to welcome our students and staff back for the 2020-2021 school year. Our number one goal is to provide the safest teaching and learning environment possible for our students and our employees. This video series will illustrate some of the changes that our families and employees will see as we reopen schools. The implementation of universal health precautions is the best way we can keep each other healthy and safe. We'll be working together to implement multiple steps which defend against the transmission of illnesses, including COVID-19. These defenses include wearing a mask, staying home when sick, frequent hand washing, social distancing, and frequent cleaning of high touch points, face coverings during the upcoming school year. The use of face coverings is required for all students and staff. Students may only remove their masks if they have permission from a staff member because they are socially distanced from one another. We are strongly encouraging parents to provide a reusable face covering or disposable mask for their child. Masks will be provided for employees and students who are unable to provide their own. Parents are asked to send students to school with a bottle of water or refillable water container as the water fountains will only be used to refill water bottles and refillable containers. Staff and visitors during the upcoming school year. We cannot stress enough the importance of staying home when you are sick. All staff and visitors will receive a temperature check upon arrival. Anyone with a temperature above 100.4 degrees will not be able to enter the facility. Staff and visitors will also be screened upon arrival. Anyone who has experienced flu-like symptoms, been exposed to someone who has tested positive for COVID-19, or have traveled internationally or to heavily impacted regions within the United States during the past 14 days will not be able to enter the facility. Student attendance during the upcoming school year. Students should stay home if they are sick. Students returning from international travel or heavily impacted regions within the United States will be required to enter precautionary quarantine for 14 days upon return. The use of perfect attendance awards and incentives will not be a focus this year. Bus safety during the upcoming school year. So this year in St. Lucie County Public Schools, bus riding for students is gonna be somewhat different. We encourage parents and guardians to drop off their students or have them walk or ride bikes to school whenever possible. When buses will be used, our riders and drivers will follow a series of new safety protocols. While waiting for the bus, we ask that all students wear face coverings and follow social distancing guidelines. Drivers will be equipped with gloves, masks, and face shields for maximum protection. Between every route, drivers and aides will be cleaning the bus seats and touch points with an EPA-approved cleaner. This cleaner disinfects within one minute. Should a case of COVID-19 be traced to a rider of one of our buses, that bus will be removed from service. A secondary deep clean disinfecting will be performed on the entire bus before it returns to service. Hand sanitizer will be provided for riders as they enter and exit the bus. Riders are required to wear face masks at all times. We ask that riders adhere to social distancing whenever possible. Students from the same household will be allowed to sit together, otherwise riders will be spread out as much as possible. Bus schedules are being developed to reduce ridership on any given route. Bus windows will be lowered to improve ventilation as much as possible. Upon arrival, do not congregate and move directly to your classroom or destination. In the classroom during the upcoming school year. While we'll strive to keep the traditional school experience the same, the implementation of universal health and safety protocols will be added as a major focus of daily life in our schools. 
In addition, we have some new classroom safety protocols. Excessive furniture will be removed to allow for maximum use of space. When possible, students will be seated at least six feet apart. While social distancing in classrooms, masks may only be removed when permitted by a faculty or staff member. When moving into smaller groups, or when social distancing is not available, masks must always be worn. Teachers will provide breaks to allow for hand washing at strategic points throughout the day, such as before and after lunch, resource and recess, and after sharing equipment or supplies. The use of soap and water for at least 20 seconds is best. However, when unavailable, hand sanitizer will be provided. Explicit lessons on healthy habits will be conducted, including topics like hand washing, cough etiquette, use of masks, social distancing, and staying home when sick. Transitions during the upcoming school year. Hallway movement and transitions will have some new safety protocols for the upcoming school year. Masks must be worn at all times when transitioning from one area of the school to another. Many hallways and stairwells will be designated as one way to reduce traffic and congestion. These areas will be well marked with appropriate signage. Students in younger grades will line up according to social distancing guidelines with the use of clearly visible signage. Today, we are here to talk about what the great things we have done, um, making sure that our staff are safe and that our children that are coming to school um, feel safe and everything is sanitized within the kitchen and on our serving lines to make sure that the students can get a healthy meal at breakfast time and at lunch time. All of our food service employees have been trained to make sure that we're following the CDC guidelines as to wearing masks and we also wear gloves during preparation. They start making sure that all of the tables and the utensils are sanitized prior to preparing the food. During the preparation, employees will be required to sanitize their hands and wash their hands every 30 minutes, just to make sure our sanitation methods are taking effect. We make sure that the serving line is sanitized prior to putting the meals on. Then after each class, the serving line will be sanitized once again. At the end of the day, we begin our sanitizing methods again and sanitizing the serving line. Then we also make sure that all the doors, all the handles, the cashier station, all of the tables are sanitized again one last time before the end of the day. So, and that is our method throughout the entire school day to make sure that our staff is feeling comfortable by making sure that they're wearing their mask and sanitizing their hands continuously, and also to make sure that our students are feeling safe and comfortable as well. Breakfast and lunch will be very different for the upcoming school year. Meal service times will be staggered with longer lunch periods to maximize social distancing. Additional school areas will also be utilized, such as outdoor spaces and classrooms. As students enter the cafeteria, they will use hand sanitizer. Face coverings must be worn upon entry and while students are in the service line. Service lines, entries, and exits will have marked spaces to help ensure social distancing. Meal service will be as contact-free as possible. To achieve this, a selection of prepackaged meals will be available and distributed in small groups. Transactions will be touchless at point of sale, with cafeteria employees entering lunch numbers. Students will be prohibited from sharing utensils or foods. While these new meal protocols will take some getting used to, our goal is to provide every student with a safe and enjoyable experience.
for the upcoming year, schools will be providing three different clinical spaces to meet the needs of our students. The main clinic will remain in place. In addition, schools are providing an isolation room for students who have been identified as having a fever or flu-like symptoms. These students must be kept separate from other students visiting the main clinic. There will also be a separate nebulizer clinic space. Each clinical space will have different requirements. The main clinic is a designated area at each school in the district, which is utilized to assess the day-to-day -day health needs of students and staff. This includes administering doctor-prescribed medicine, first aid, and performing mandated health screenings. Students who fall ill during the day and display flu-like symptoms will be cared for in a designated isolation room. If a student presents a fever, parents will be contacted and advised to pick up the child from school as quickly as possible. Any student with a fever must stay home for a minimum of three days. If a student has tested positive for COVID-19, that student must stay home for at least 14 days. Students who require in-school doctor prescribed nebulizer treatments will receive those treatments in the nebulizer room, separate from other students, including those in the main clinic and the isolation room. COVID-19 response during the upcoming school year. Should a case of COVID-19 be found at one of our schools, the district will work closely with the Florida Department of Health in St. Lucie County. As with all matters of public health, the Department of Health will take the lead and conduct a thorough contact tracing investigation. They will contact parents and identify students and employees who should stay home and self-quarantine to reduce further spread. Impacted classrooms or school facilities will remain off limits as they undergo deep cleaning with CDC recommended EPA approved hospital grade disinfectant. In addition, impacted buses will also be removed from service to undergo deep cleaning. COVID-19 is primarily an airborne pathogen. We are focusing on ensuring students minimize their risks by hand washing, having good hygiene, and healthy habits. During the upcoming school year, classrooms and shared areas will be cleaned first and then disinfected with hospital grade disinfectant. We're going to be following an enhanced protocol for cleaning and disinfecting all touch points throughout the day. Uh, and at night, of course, so it's all cleaned and disinfected for the morning. For deep cleaning, we're going to be using a disinfectant. We call it the EMIS machine. It is uh, approved by the uh, CDC and EPA. It has formulas that are approved for disinfection. These machines are a combination of an electrostatic sprayer with Clorox disinfectant and sanitizing solutions which provide chemical coverage quickly and easily. The system uses an electrode to introduce an attractive charge to the chemical mixture and then atomizes the solution before using an air compressor to generate the liquid flow. It can cover up to 18,000 square feet per hour, even in hard to reach places, including the sides, underside, and backside of surfaces. The Clorox 360 solution is also an EPA approved solution per CDC guidelines. We will be disinfecting throughout the day High touch points being pushes, door pulls, handrails, computer keyboards, light switches, anything that is a high touch point throughout the school. We will also be providing uh, disinfectant wipes and hand sanitizer for every classroom. Parents, we have the same goal that you have. We want to have a healthy and safe school year where we're meeting the needs of your students. I know with the collaborative partnerships and engagement from our families, we will be able to reach that goal. St. Lucie Public Schools, we're in this together.